Yeah, that's how it goes. Hey friends out there in YouTube land, Robert Ham here with Robert Ham Photography. Today I got a portrait session going on down at the oceanfront. I thought I'd like to share with you what I use on a portrait session like this. A little bit of background, we're gonna be doing portraits by the pier, there's a little carnival kind of in that area, and it's a lot of fun. In this case, I've got two kids, one four-year-old little girl, and a turning one-year-old today, boy, and he will be doing a smash cake at the last five, six minutes of the actual photo session. And then, of course, mom and dad. So it's a total of four people. The big focus here is going to be on the children and the boys' smash cake with just a few family shots. Generally, what I do when I get to the location is I uh, set up a quick itinerary. This is a mini session, so it's only 45 minutes, which is really probably the max I like to do with young children like this in the first place. And then I also get any information that mom or dad may want, any special shots. Now we've talked about this ahead of time and we, I think we've got it pretty much nailed down. So I don't expect it to change too much, but there are some signature shots I have down at my portraits at the pier location. And that's very important because I shoot here often. I've got a very, very well choreographed set of shots and different looks so that even if mom and dad run out of uh, favorite poses and things that they'd like to do, I've got plenty. And I have a feeling that's exactly what's gonna happen. So let me talk to you about the cameras. Of course, I've got my X-T1 right here and I'm going to be using the Rokinon 85F14. I've got a 10 stop variable neutral density filter and I'm gonna be using this camera right here. It's very important because this lens is gonna allow me to get some crazy bokeh. And the only other thing is this is a manual focus lens. And so it's going to be a little bit trying. It always is when you're dealing with kids that may move around quite a bit. However, the shots that you get out of it are just absolutely excellent. Of course, the X-T1 has a sync speed of 1 180th of a second. I'm going to be pairing this neutral density filter with the sync speed in order to add flash in later. Now, to control flash, I'm going to be using my YN560 TX right here. That's gonna go on the top of the camera. In fact, I'll go ahead and put that on now. And the flash that I'll be using is actually uh, the YN560 series flash, which is pretty standard for me. That's my favorite flash to use. They're inexpensive and they work very well. They're completely manual. And if you understand how to use manual flash, then there's no problem. And if you don't, then learn because that will open up quite a bit of your photography for you. This guy right here is going to go on a light stand like this. This is a Westcott light stand. And I gotta tell you, man, these things, they earn their money. They cost a little bit more, but they also, they're very heavy duty. This one even, well, this one's a medium duty one for them, but uh, man, it's, I've used it for three years now and it's in great shape. Other light stands that I've bought that are cheaper, not so much. Now, because of using flash, we're gonna have to think about some diffusion because any uncovered light source is gonna be really, really tough. And I've got a, uh, a soft box right here, right? Oh, that's nice, ah, I like that. I've got a soft box right here and I've even got an umbrella. But no, we're at the beach. Why? You know, I see photographers out there with strobes on light stands like this, with light boxes like this. And if you're not using some Alien B or some big type of uh, really powerful light source, I don't see the point on using a big old soft box unless you've got um, a couple of different strobes in there. And the reason is this. First of all, we're using a neutral density filter to gate the light so that I can shoot without having to stop my aperture down. That's a big deal right there. So that means we're already making it dark. The poor little flash isn't very bright in the first place, but with the neutral density filter, it is bright enough to add as much light as you would want. Now, it's nowhere near as powerful as something like a thousand watt Alien B or, or Profoto, things like that. But for right now, for what we're doing, this little flash is going to provide more than enough for me, especially when using the neutral density filter. So, that being the case, I don't want to dull it down too much. I actually just want to use the Gary Fong Light Sphere. Now, I remember when this thing first came out, I was an early adopter. People, people thought I was a little crazy. They're like, what are you doing? Now MagMod and several different makers are out there doing all kinds of things. Let me tell you what, this thing has gone with me everywhere for five years now. I started using it, I started using flash and really learning flash about two years into my wedding photography business. And this thing is really what does it. Now, what I won't be using is the dome. I won't need the dome. 
I'll just need this a little bit. And that'll just help me kind of smooth things out. If I do determine that I need the dome, then I'll go ahead and put that on right there just like that and we'll go on pretty simply. No real issue. As we continue, there's going to be another camera that we're using. And this camera right here is the, my trusty X100S. You guys know it. I've got on this camera, of course, the um, 50 mil equivalency conversion lens. So I'm getting in a little bit tighter. Now this is my, this is my do everything camera. So if for some reason I get out and I'm having a hard time with my 85 F1.4, then I can switch over to my 50 and I can even take this off and switch over to, um, you know, the 23 mil, uh, which is a 35 equivalent lens on here. It, it's so hard to talk about this particular camera because we talk about things in 35 millimeter lengths all the time. This gives a 50 millimeter focal length. When you take the conversion lens off, it gives a 35 millimeter focal length if you are in 50 millim uh, 35 millimeter equivalents. The nice part about it is it's got a neutral density filter built into it, three stop neutral density filter, as well as a leaf shutter. I've got a circular polarizer on there, so basically I'm getting about two additional stops. So I've got five stops of light gating capability with this camera right here and the ability to sync at my widest aperture of f2 all the way up at one one thousandth of a second. If we add five stops, which the neutral density filter and the circular polarizing filter give us, that's like sh uh, shooting in a condition when you need one one thousand, one two thousand, four thousand, eight thousand, sixteen, one thirty uh, two thousandths of a second. So if you were to be in a condition where you would need one thirty two thousandth of a second, five stops of light gating capability takes us down to one one thousandth of a second. And at that point, I can shoot with my, uh, my aperture wide open. That's exactly what we're doing here. And that's exactly what we're doing on the X-T1 as well with that neutral density filter, the variable one that's built into it. So this is the kit that I'm taking with me. As you can see right here, in all of its glory. Uh, I might throw some images at the end of this video. It just depends. I guess one last thing to note today, because we're doing a portrait mini session, it's a very quick session, I am going to be shooting in JPEG. Of course, I'm going to be backing those up with RAWs in case I need them. But a short session like this, I generally go ahead and just use my JPEGs to edit. I edit my JPEGs to add my finalized things on there. I don't have a lot of time in, in these kinds of sessions, and I found that Fuji is great for that. So I'll bring the JPEGs into Lightroom. I'll clear up any issues. If there's a shot that I just dodged, but I really need to have it, I'll have the RAWs to use for that. And the JPEGs will just help me speed up my workflow on the back end. The benefit to that is I know how to get the shot I want going into it, so I'm comfortable shooting that way. You may not be comfortable shooting that way. Uh, if you're a new shooter just starting out and you rely a lot on the camera to fix your issues, definitely make sure that you're shooting raw and to develop the raw so you can learn your exposure and see where you're actually right and wrong. Otherwise, uh, JPEGs are a good way to go to help save some time on the back end as long as you have an exceptional input on the front end. You can't blow out your highlights, you can't screw up the color, you can't crush your blacks. You have to have a nice image input in order for the JPEGs to really work well for you on the output. Guys, I'm Robert Hand with Robert Hand Photography. You've been checking out what we're doing. Don't forget to give a look over on my Instagram at Rob Ham Photo, you can find out what I do with Instax photography, a very favorite kind of photography. And I would like to thank you for watching. I want to remind you, I'll catch you on the flip side.